The Listening Heart with Pastor Randy Dignan. Hello, Pastor Randy Dignan here at Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. Do you have some questions? Well, I sure do. I'm looking forward to these programs we're going to offer to you because that's the theme of these programs is about the subject of asking questions. You know, I think sometimes preachers and Christians put a negative emphasis on asking God questions about subject matters of life. You know that God's okay with us asking Him questions? In these many programs, you're going to see guests coming on the program and asking you questions right there on the spot. Questions about the Bible. Questions about sign language and deaf culture. And to be honest with you, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you I don't know the answer. I'm so glad we have a God in heaven that knows all the answers to our questions. And I'm so thankful for a Bible that gives us the answer to our questions. You see, it's okay to ask an all-knowing God questions. He may not answer the way we want. He may not answer in our time frame. But God will answer our questions. The gospel is full of people, disciples, and even the Pharisees themselves asking Jesus Christ questions on a regular basis. And Jesus always had an answer. You know, the questions that we have, they vary. Some of you might be going through a tough time and have questions relating to that. Some of you might be going through a great time and have questions relating to that. Well, the big question we want to answer is the question of how we know for sure going to heaven. That will be emphasized on these programs. We're also going to answer the question about how to build a relationship with God, especially through the book of Psalms, which I just have a, a passion for to teach and preach on. And, of course, we'll introduce some beautiful music through sign language, too. So looking forward to this great program we have ahead. People are going to be asking me questions about the Bible, questions about sign language, questions about deaf culture. I sure hope I have the answer. Guess what? Many times I don't, but God always has the answer. So I challenge you to get ready. Get your questions ready, because here comes some answers from the Bible. God is good, and stay tuned. So here comes the program. Hello, Pastor Randy Dignan here of The Listening Heart, and boy, I sure am excited about the program we have here today for you. In just a little while, we're going to do something new that we're going to be doing in the rest of this season where we're going to allow different guests to come on and they'll introduce themselves briefly and they're going to ask me a question about deaf culture, sign language, and then maybe even a Bible question. And so we're excited about that and see if they can stump the preacher. But of course, we're going to stick to some of the uh, old ways, like we're going to have a sign language class after a while. And of course, right now we have a message that I'd like to share with you. And that's the first thought of today. In a little while, you're going to meet my friend Wesley Mitchell, and uh, he's a fine young man, 14 years old, and he's just a blessing. He's going to ask me some questions, and you'll get to know him a little bit. But I want to talk today about the subject of what does God really expect from us? You ever thought about that? I think so many times in the Christian walk, we all think in our minds that, that God has this, this plan for us, but man has taken God's plan and changed it to how we would interpret it, and then we get confused to find out what does God really expect of us. I think personally many of us struggle in our Christian walk because we've never really found clarity or purpose. In fact, many books have been written about the subject of purpose and really they're big hits because people are looking for a purpose in life. So let me give you a few thoughts today to encourage you as it encouraged me to make sure we understand a little bit about what God really expects from us. First of all, I want you to notice this. We serve the God, the creator of this universe. He's amazing. As I sit here this recording, I'm sitting here at my parents' property out here in the country, and behind me you see these trees and the grass, and you hear the birds singing in the background. All of this was orchestrated, planned, and created by your God and my God. And that God who runs the universe knows your name and my name, and according to the Bible, he knows how many hairs are on our head, some more than others. But in this particular verse I want to share with you today is this. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. It says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found, what's the next word? Well, hold on to that. We'll get back to that in just a second because that's what God wants us to be. First of all, our expectations of, of, of what God wants and God's expectations of what God wants from us are often different. The thing is, many people sometimes have their own ideas. For example, let me ask you right now. What does God expect from you? Think about it for just a few seconds right now. What does really God want from your life? What does God want from my life? Well, obviously, first of all, He wants us to be saved, salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. And, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But, but what does God really expect after salvation? What does He want from you? What does He want from me? All right, we're going to get that in just a little while. Now, number two, this statement I'm going to spend more time on. Our opinions of His expectations often come from a dangerous neighborhood called comparison neighborhood. I call this the one of the most dangerous secrets in many of our churches and in Christian movement. Because so many Christians miss out on the opportunity to serve God 
because they're always comparing themselves to other people. They look at what he has or what she has or what he can do or how, what she can do. And the Bible even says that comparing ourselves among each other is not wise. And yet so many Christians today will look at somebody and say, wow, they can sing, but I can't. So therefore, I'm not as good to the, uh, uh, I'm not as good as them. Or I'm not having as much value to God. And that is a lie from the devil. You see, God made you exactly the way you are, and God made me exactly the way I am. And according to the Bible, in the book of Matthew, God even talks about the parable of the talents. Talents. It's actually a financial term. And he talks about how one man got one talent, another man got two talents, another man got five talents. Some people can handle five, some people can handle two, and of course the story goes on to say that the man with one ended up not doing anything with it and disappointed his Lord. You see, all of us have been given something to do, and that's the purpose that God wants us to have. And again, I'm going to go back to that in just a little while and talk about what God really expects from us. So Christians today, we look at this world, and sometimes we look at even the non-Christians, and we get frustrated because we feel like, wow. Life's going good for them. They have a nicer house than me, a nicer car than me. Hold on a second. If you're watching this program and you're living in the United States of America and you're watching this, you should never ever say that again because I have traveled to third world countries and I can honestly tell you that we are so blessed. Our homes, our cars, our clothes, everything we have in America is just so much better. We've been so blessed by the goodness of God that sometimes we take it for granted. I'm talking about myself right here. God has blessed me with the best, the best country to live in. The roads are the best, the cars are the best, the water we drink is the best, the food we eat is the best. Everything about America is just the best. We've been so blessed to live here. That's why people are trying to come here. Now, sometimes as Christians, we get frustrated because we look around and we think somebody has it better than we do. I've heard this quote before and it's funny, it says, when you think that the grass is green on the other side, realize that grass gets greener because of manure. <laughs> a lot of truth to that. Sometimes it'll be greener, but you gotta deal with a whole lot more manure. The point I'm trying to make is simply this. You be you. Even Dr. Seuss teaches us that. He says the best person you can be is you because nobody else can be you and nobody else can be me. In fact, God wants us to be true to ourselves. For example, if I were to try to be somebody else, I am now no longer real. You know what this world is craving more than anything? is Christians that will just be real, genuine, serious, real deal, born again Christians. Christians that are Christians 24-7. Christians that aren't just Christians on Sundays, you know, the goody tissues, but every day. Christians who live their walk every day. I love this quote that says, preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. There's a lot of truth to that. So today I want to encourage you to think about that thought. So number one, our expectations of what God wants from us and his expectations are different oftentimes. We think God wants this, and really God wants that, okay? Secondly, our opinions of expectations come often from comparisons. So number three, what does God expect? Well, let's go back and finish that verse. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2 says, More what is required in stewards that a man be found, ready for this? Faithful. There it is. That is the secret word. Faithful. Faithful. Boy, that is a word that has become uh, a non-entity anymore in America. It seems like we've removed that from our dictionaries. In every area of our life, for example, the workplace, people just aren't faithful like they used to. In marriage, they're not faithful. As parents, we're not faithful like we used to. Oh my, don't get me started on church. Church is not a priority in America. Sports has overtaken church. And, and it's just sad to see that we just aren't as faithful as we used to be. So let me challenge you today to realize that it's simple. God says, here's what I expect of you. Here's what's required of my stewards. Just be found faithful. Anybody can do that. It doesn't take talent to be faithful. It doesn't take good looks to be faithful. It doesn't take charisma or charm or, or, or money or fame to be uh, faithful. Anybody can just get up every day and do what they did the day before. You see, every day is a new day for me. The Christian life is not measured in days or weeks or even years, but rather in decades. And so as Christians, we need to realize that the Christian life is just an accumulation of many days, which are made up of many hours, which are made up of many minutes. I fail all the time, but I tell you, it's a blessing to know that I am trying and striving to be faithful for a God who's been so good to me. Here's the question for you and me. Is God faithful to us? Is he? Of course he is. 
His mercy is faithful. His love is faithful. His compassion is faithful. His grace is faithful. The Word of God is still here 2,000 years later. He is a faithful God, wherefore we can now be faithful Christians. Boy, that, that should really encourage you as it encourages me. Because sometimes, again, as we compare and look around and say, oh, he's better than me, she's better than me. No, no, no. Just be faithful. You know, I, I know many missionaries around the world. I'm good friends with missionaries all over the world. You name the country, I probably know the missionary in that, in that country. When you go to the European countries, people aren't as receptive to the gospel as they are in some of the other countries. Right now, many, many people are getting saved in the country of the Philippines. I have many friends in the Philippines, and I thank God for that. We call it a ripe field right now. But if you go to a country like England, the work there is a little bit tougher. People aren't exactly lining up and banging on the doors to get into church. It takes a lot more work to just get one person saved. But see, God doesn't measure. Watch this. Don't miss this statement. God doesn't measure our fruitfulness. He measures our faithfulness. Oh, that's a beautiful phrase. Let me say it again. God doesn't measure us by our fruitfulness. He measures us by our faithfulness. That's how God measures our Christian success. Now, America, though, everything's about numbers, results, results and numbers. It's not like that with God. God's never been a big numbers person when you think about it. Really, he's not. You want proof of that? Remember when Gideon had to go to battle? Over 20,000 guys showed up. God said, that's too many. Then they got rid of some and they came down a small army. God said, it's still too many. They finally got down to 300. And Gideon and 300 men won a great battle that day. I've often heard it say that the Bible starts with one man in the garden all by himself and ends with one man on the island all by himself. Even our Jesus Christ, our Savior, when he died on the cross and shed his blood, died alone. And when he rose from the dead, he didn't come out of the tomb to a welcoming crowd of the big banner saying, hey, he lives. You see, God's never been impressed with numbers. God just wants somebody to be faithful. He wants a five-year-old kid to be faithful. He wants that 50-year-old man to be faithful. He wants that married couple to be faithful. He wants that husband, that wife, to just be faithful. He wants teenagers out there that are watching this to be faithful. He wants the deaf to be faithful. He wants the hearing to be faithful. And remember, he has a right to expect faithfulness from you and me. Why? Because he saved us. Thank God for salvation. Jesus still says, ye must be born again. Praise God for that. So because of that, you and I have the opportunity, the obligation to serve him faithfully. I want to be a faithful Christian, a faithful husband, a faithful son, a faithful friend, a faithful father, a faithful preacher. When it's all said and done, I want God to look down and say, Randy, I can count on you. I can count on you. And I look up and say, thank you, God. I'm glad you can. So remember, what does God expect from us? He wants us to be faithful. Well, I sure am excited about this next segment. Don't miss it. My friend Wesley's going to come join us, and he's going to have a quick interview and ask me some questions. So stick around. See you in a few. Hello, I'm Pastor Nick Dignan of Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. You may have seen my brother's program, The Listening Heart. Well, we just want everyone to know that if there's anything we can do to be a help to you and your family, please feel free to contact us by going to our website at www.bbcjc.com. Or if you're ever in our area, here's a church that loves and cares for people. We'd love to meet you and have the chance to visit with you and worship the Lord with you. May God bless you and your family. And take care. Welcome to the interview segment where you have the opportunity to get to know somebody that is very special in my life. And this is my friend, Wesley Mitchell. It's good to have you on the program today. Thank you for having me. Now, Wesley Mitchell has been in our church his whole life. I've been his pastor for a long time. I've been pastoring the same church for 19 years, and you are 14 at this yes, time. Sir. And so at 14 years old, obviously I've been his pastor his whole life, and it's been great. But the first thing i like our audience to get to know about you, and we always do this with our guests, is to tell your salvation story. Everybody has a salvation story, and I love to hear salvation stories. So tell the audience how you got saved. Well, uh, I was at Triple S Christian Ranch in Arkansas, and uh, the Lord was tugging on my heart for about a year or so about uh, getting reassured of my salvation because I kept on doubting. And uh, he just finally, I finally told him that I will. And uh, I got my reassurance of salvation on June 22nd. So That's wonderful. And now you know for sure you're going to heaven. Yes. Well, thank God for camp. I get to preach a lot of camps. And you go to camp every summer, one or two camps a summer. And that's great. That's wonderful. I'm so happy for that. Now, Wesley's been a blessing in our church. Also a great athlete, pretty good basketball player. Uh, he can't quite beat me yet, but he's, he's getting there, and he's, he's playing pretty good at basketball. I love watching him play very fast, hard worker, so it's exciting. But one of the neat things about our church is we have a deaf ministry, and I think you've been starting to go to sign language class lately and yeah. learn some sign language. Uh, what's it like being exposed to that world? 
Well, I think it's very unique that our church uh, has that ministry, and I think that I, I like our church because it's we're always trying to get find different ministries to serve in, and I find that a very unique way to serve. Man, and you've learned some sign language so far a little bit? A little bit. A little bit. You liking it? Yeah. So do you remember any signs that you like that you've learned? Yes and yes. no. Yes and no. There you go. Those are two important questions. I always tell people if you're going to learn sign language, there's some basic. Learn thank you, please. Where's the bathroom? That's always important. Yes and no. Those are good signs. All right. All right. Now's your chance to try to stump your preacher. So what questions do you have? You're going deaf route first or Bible first? Deaf. Deaf questions, all right? Okay, so my deaf question is, why do why don't all pe deaf people get a cochlear implant if it helps them to hear? Wow, that is a great question. And honestly, Wes, in the deaf community, that sometimes is a controversial issue, but uh, I think I can answer it in a way that will make everybody happy. First of all, not all deaf people qualify for cochlear implants because the cochlear implant prim works primarily with the cochlear and uh, I believe I'm correct in saying this that when deaf people have nerve damage they can't have the cochlear implant however a lot of deaf people do qualify for it and I personally think that the deaf world is, is almost like a custom design world you know for example sometimes people that are bigger want custom design clothes or some guy that's seven feet tall has to get custom design suits well, deaf people are like that every deaf person has different decibel losses of hearing and some deaf people are profoundly deaf, like my dad. Like you know, you, you know my dad. You see him all the time. He's profoundly deaf. So he's been in the deaf world all his life. He used a hearing aid for one or two weeks of his life and hated it. He says, "I don't know how you hearing people survive all the noises in the background." But then you have people like my sister and mom who have somewhat hear, have a little bit of hearing, but they they prefer not to because they're just so in love with their deaf culture. And most deaf people in the deaf culture realm view the cochlear implant as something that they really choose not to have because they're happy with being deaf. But most deaf people have hearing family members. So if, if a cochlear implant can help them, now we support it. My dad's stance has always been, if the cochlear implant can help a deaf person, we support it. But if it doesn't help, then don't do it. Here's a funny story about that, that question. Uh, years ago, we knew a, a deaf kid that got a cochlear implant and he hated it. His mom and dad made him get it and he hated it. So one day when he was seven or eight years old, he called his mom from the bathroom. His mom ran back, you know, nervous and worried. And he, he, when she came to the bathroom, he dropped it in the toilet and flushed it down the toilet. So his mom and dad learned that day, okay, my son does not like the cochlear implant. So again, I think, I know many deaf people that have it and love it. I know deaf people who've tried it and hated it. And I know deaf people who don't want it at all. So I think it just depends on the individuals. But that's a great question. Okay, my second question is, I'm asking this question because I like sports. What was it like being a CODA and playing football? Oh, wonderful. Good question. I love that. Well, I had, I had a, a huge uh, advantage that many players don't have in that my dad was a, an expert football player. My dad was an all-star for the deaf football world when he was in high school and played even college football for the deaf university in Washington, D.C. called Guide University. And the neat thing is, since my dad knew football, he could stand in the bleachers, and me and my dad have both have always had pretty good eyesight. So I could be in the middle of the field trying to make a play, make a tackle, and my dad in the stands is signing to me, you're too slow, or get, hit harder, or play harder. You know, he could just sign to me, and I could see him, whereas a hearing person would never be able to yell in a huge, we played in pretty big stadiums with, with large crowds. There's no way you could hear them do that, but my dad was able to sign to me. And my football coaches were always supportive of that. They were always like, hey, you know, your dad knows football. We don't mind him talking to you. So it was a blessing because he'd stand up there signing to me, giving me instruction. Or sometimes I'd get a good tackle. He'd say, yes, yeah, great tackle. He'd give me some encouraging words. So really, I'm thankful that I was able to play sports and be a coda because I had extra eyes watching me, extra coaches helping me. And he was able to communicate to me right there without having to worry about all the noise because we could sign to each other. So that's a great question. Okay. Now on to the Bible question. I know you have read the Bible through and have also studied specific passages, but is there any particular way you like to read the Bible through or study specific passages to make it more real and interesting to you? Well, that's a great question. You know, a lot of people out there will read their Bible based on charts, and I've done that before, you know, where you, it's almost like a punch in and punch out. You check off three chapters a day, and, and I'm for that. I think it's great. Some people can make it sincere, but I was, for me personally, it became almost robotic, almost like it was something I had to do, and I didn't really want it to become like that. So I just study the Bible randomly. I just read it randomly. But I will say this, every day I have my two, I call it vitamin P, right? Everybody talks about vitamin D and vitamin C. I have what's called vitamin P and I have two of them, Psalms and Proverbs. I think every Christian should read a little bit of Psalms every day because it gives you a praise attitude. And you should read Proverbs every day because it gives you wisdom. So I read Psalms and Proverbs. I have my vitamin P every day. 
then other other days I'll read from the epistles, I'll read from the Old Testament passages. But anyway, I, that's a great question. I personally think Christians should, again, going back to custom design, everybody has their own unique walk with God. And if you get to the point where you're excited about reading your Bible, then stay with it. If you get to the point where it's like, I have to do it punch in and punch out, then I would challenge you to find a different way to get involved in the Word of God. Good question. And that's all there. That's all you got? Yep. Well, it's been an honor to have Wesley on my program today. I always hit him with a chest there and uh, at church, and uh, I'm proud of you, son. You're doing great. He's got wonderful parents, wonderful grandparents that are all serving the Lord in our church. And thank you for your time to be on the program today. Thank you for having me. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be back for sign names class. See you in a little bit. Thanks for watching. I always get asked, how can I find more information about deaf people in sign language? Well, the good news is the internet has a lot of the information. Just hit in your search engine, American Sign Language, and you'll find out all kinds of information. Also, each state has its own commission for the deaf and school for the deaf. So I would encourage you to check those things out. They have a lot of deaf activities, deaf functions, sometimes free sign language classes. And I would encourage you to find those organizations and, and get together with some of those functions and be exposed to that. God bless. Have a great day. All right, welcome to class. Boy, Wesley's a fine young man. I hope you understand the purpose of me doing this is to just remind people that there are still good young people out there. There's young teenagers and young kids that I know personally, and you just met one of them. That young man honors and obeys his parents. He does. I've seen his life. He's not a perfect kid, but he's a good kid, and there's still hope for this country. All right, well, let's go to class now. I love signing to class, and I know I get a lot of feedback from you all. And by the way, continue to bring that feedback in. We're always looking for ways to improve things, and we're excited about the opportunity to continue to minister through the Listening Heart in Season 4 now. Well, let's do the sign for God. I love the sign. It's a reverent sign, God. Just put your thumb in there and just say God, all right? So you saw me use the sign for God, and then I did the sign for expects, expects, expects. We also use that sign as a, some version of hope, but for this particular class today, expects. What does God expect from you and me? That's how you would sign it, expects. Starts from the mind, put your thumbs inside, expect. Or you can do expect too, expect with your thumbs out. That's expect, expect. I like the sign for comparisons, comparisons. All right, the sign for comparison is simply this. You got this category over here, comparison over here. Comparison, and eyes and your the way your head turns is important too. I'm comparing this, I'm comparing it to that. Remember the old Pepsi and Coke uh, test, which one tastes better, and they would block them. You had to compare them and figure out which one tastes better way back in the day. You would compare, you would taste on this side, then you would taste on this side, and then you make a decision. And as I said already, Christians have a problem with comparing themselves. I use the word sign for the word often, often. You see, as, as Christians, we will often compare ourselves, often, often. It's a frequent action, you see. It's, it happens once, it happened again. Now, you can emphasize word like often. That's what I love about sign language. You can really put facial expressions to it. Like, you know, like if you're talking about how my boss has such high expectations of me, you could really emphasize and say, he has so much expectations of me and put like, almost stress in your face. Or his expectations of me aren't that bad. And you see, I've got more of a casual, leisure facial expression, which is important. Then you comparisons, all right, now, often you can do the same thing. You can exaggerate the sign like, like, man, man, I, you know, I get sick often. Hopefully you don't, but often you can do it several times and slide it through. Or I don't get, I don't get sick that often. Maybe once in a while. This is a nice sign for once in a while. And you can exaggerate that. Once in a while. Like it just skips. Well, in other words, it happens once and then a whole bunch of time passes before the next time. Once in a while. Often, once in a while. All right, the sign for opinions. Opinions. Very simple. This is a sign for letter O. All right, O, opinions. Come through your mind. Why? Because opinions are things we think and then we speak them out, right? So opinions. So I use that sign of while I go, God's opinion and our opinion. So God's opinion of us. We need to focus on that. Opinions, all right? So let's review real quickly. We got God. We got expects. We got comparisons. We got often. We got once in a while. And then we got opinions. Now let's talk about the subject of faithfulness, all right? Now, faith is this sign. I've taught this program before. Faith is this sign. Faith. It's something you believe in and you're going to grab onto. The Christian faith. I cling to the cross, all right? Faith. So faithfulness is going to be close to it. Again, it's something that starts from your mind here. Faithfulness. And again, anytime you have a sign that's going to emphasize a duration of period, you always want to do it at least twice. For example, you would do often. You wouldn't just do often. That doesn't make sense. It's often. Okay. It's something that happens more than once. So faithfulness is the same thing. You don't want to just say faithfulness. It's faithfulness. Because I did it twice, immediately people think, okay, it's a repetitive sign. It means it's something that lasts a longer duration of time. So we have faithfulness twice. Sometimes you can talk about, for example, my dear friend, Pastor Bill Clark in, in the Chicagoland area. I've interviewed him on this program before. That man's been faithful for 
40 plus years at his church, 45 years serving God, you can emphasize and say, man, that man is just faithful. And you can do it several times. Well, he deserves it. Why? Because he's been at one place for a long time. So it's, that man is just faithful. And I emphasize it three or four times and that's acceptable too. But in common everyday conversation, it just be twice faithful. So review again, God expects comparisons often, once in a while, opinions, faithfulness, and then required, required. The verse we quoted had the word, more of it is required in stewards. We are his servants, so technically we can look at it, the boss servant analogy of it. God is our boss. God can definitely encourage us to do things and sometimes even command us. So required is this. It's like I have a demand, a demand to the same word for demand sign, demand or required. I require you. I am a father of four children. There's some things I require them to do. And uh, your facial expressions tends to show more of a serious look to it. Uh, I'm gonna require you to do that. You're required to follow the speed limit. Oh. Anyway, you're required to pay taxes. You're required, whatever, required. Not always a pleasant sign, but in this verse it's okay because God's requirements are always a blessing to us. And last but not least, we never teach Sinem's class without mentioning the wonderful name of Jesus. Jesus, the nail prints in each hand. Jesus is the reason for this program. He's the reason for our salvation. He's the reason for our hope and praise God. Jesus is coming again someday. Thank you so much for watching the program. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanna remind you that this is a viewer supported ministry. And for those that have supported us financially, we thank you so much. For all of you that have supported us prayerfully, that's even more important. Thank you so much for that. I want to remind you that there are ways of contacting me. My information should be on the screen. I have a Twitter account. I have a Facebook account. I have an Instagram account. And of course, you can contact us through our website at the church at bbcjc.com. And my email's on there. I would love to help you in any way I can. You know what? I'm on a quest to still have questions answered. So as we continue to ask the questions, may we realize that God is the answer to all our questions. Keep your heart open. Keep on listening. Remember the theme, the listening heart. God is still speaking. Let's make sure we will continue to listen. God bless you. Thank you so much for your support. And I want you to make it a great day. We'll see you next time. If you would like to become a ministry partner with The Listening Heart, you may contact us at www.bbcjc.com. If you would like a DVD copy of this program, please visit our website at www.bbcjc.com. Listening Heart is a viewer-supported ministry.